Hi everyone. This time we're going to talk a little bit about simple machines. Um, actually, there's going to be two videos about simple machines. This is going to be part one, and the next one, of course, will be part two. A simple machine is a mechanical device that changes the direction or the magnitude of the force. There are six basic types of simple machine. The lever, the pulley, the wheel and axle, the inclined plane, the wedge, and the screw. These three lever pulleys and wheel and axles all sort of are, are kiss and cousins of each other and incline planes wedge and screw these are all very very closely related and we're going to spend a little time talking about each of these and i know you have studied simple machines in elementary school junior high maybe some of you had them in high school but uh, you're smarter now and so hopefully you're going to understand them a little bit better Simple machines give us something which is called mechanical advantage. Mechanical advantage is a mathematical comparison of how much force we get out compared to the amount of force we have to put in. Um, simple machines multiply force. So, for example, this fellow is trying to move all of this weight from here up to, let's say, some sort of a loading dock. If this thing weighs 100 pounds, he can lift it, this maybe one meter, and all in one go, but you know what? That's going to be hard. I couldn't lift 100 pounds a meter. I'm, I'm kind of wimpy. But by putting it on an inclined plane, what you do is his body doesn't have to exert all 100 pounds immediately. He only has to exert maybe 30 pounds, but the 30 pounds can be exerted over one to three meters, and he is going to end up with, how about 33 and a third pounds, and he's going to end up with his 100 pounds moved one meter higher, and he's going to have the same amount of force output or the same amount of work output. So the amount of force he has to get out, the 100 pounds lifted this far, is the same, but he doesn't have to put as much in. He can do just that 33 pounds at a time. So simple machines allow us to do things we normally could not do. Now we've been talking a little bit about torque and we're going to begin with a discussion of levers. Levers can be all sorts of things. One of them they can be is a pry bar. So let's say I have a large weight and I want to lift this weight. Let's say it weighs 100 newtons and I want to lift it one meter. So I want to go from here one meter up. Okay, I want to go from the bottom, so this is one meter higher, 100 newtons. That's what I want out. But this is too much work for me, and this is too difficult. So what I do is I use a lever, and I'm using the concept of leverage to make this work. If I use this concept that the sum of the torques around a pivot are going to be zero, this idea of equilibrium with torques, here's what I end up with. If I have 100 newtons of torque times 1 meter, I have a very, very large force times a very small lever arm. Well, what can I have on the other half of the lever arm? In order to push this down, in order to make this job easy, I can make this lever arm very, very, very long. So let's say I make this 10 meters long. So I make the lever arm big. How much force do I have to input to do the same job? Well, then I only have to put in 10 newtons of force. I get the same torque on both sides, but on one side, small lever arm, big force. On the other side, big lever arm, little force. And that's going to give me my force out divided by how much force I have to put in. This is my little force over my big force. That's going to be my mechanical advantage. And in this situation, I am putting in 10 and I'm getting out 100. So the mechanical advantage in this situation is 10. It's multiplying my force input by 10. Now, when I was a young scientist and I was looking at stuff like levers, I always wondered to myself, did these violate some sort of law of conservation of energy because I kind of like the law of conservation of energy. But it works pretty slick because if I talk about this from a work energy perspective, what I've accomplished is I have raised a 100 Newton block, one meter 
I have done 100 Newton meters or 100 joules of work. So how much energy did I have to put in? Let's say I put in 10 Newtons of work, but I had to move this a much bigger distance. This only moved one measly little meter. So I had to move my tiny force, but through 10 meters, 10 times 10, 10 Newtons times 10 meters, I still do 100 joules of work. And because a pivot is so low in friction, it's a very efficient machine. About all the energy I put in, I end up as output. Pretty slick. One of the things that's cool about levers is as the lever arm gets longer, the mechanical advantage increases. Um, if you've ever had to change a tire on an automobile, the, the little tire irons that come in cars are not notoriously long. Um, I actually I found this picture online of a an expanding tire iron, but I remember my dad as a kid having to change a tire and the, and the nuts and bolts and everything was really all kind of seized up, and he put a pipe on the end of the tire iron to just give it more leverage, then exerted a force on it, and he was able to break it loose. Baseball, if you're going to try for a home run hit, well, for a home run hit, look where the guy holds the bat right at the very end because he wants as much leverage as possible. When you bunt, yes, you're going to reduce the force of the swing, but you also choke up on the bat. You give it less leverage. The old Greek scientist Archimedes had a very famous quote. He said, give me a lever long enough and a fulcrum on which to place it, and I shall move the world. And he understood this concept, that if you could have a lever that was really, 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 really long, you could have a small enough force applied that anybody could really lift anything, no matter how big it was. Levers are all over your life. Um, Players. These happen to be two levers that are connected together. Small little force in. Here's your pivot and a big force out. And here you have a long lever arm. Here you have a short lever arm. In a wheelbarrow, this is a different class of levers, and we're not going to go into the class of levers in this video, but the fulcrum, the pivot, is down here at the wheel. You have a long lever arm here, small amount of force, and you are allowed to lift a big force, but the middle of the load is a smaller lever arm. We've talked about levers for lifting. If you try and use a hammer to pry a nail out of a board, here is your short lever arm, big force, and you apply a small force, the long lever arm. When you start talking about lifting things in the human body, the body is made of lots and lots of mechanical levers. Here's your fulcrum. Here is your, your pivot point. And if you are going to try and lift something big over here, um, you can apply a relatively, you're close to that fulcrum, you can apply a relatively big force with a small lever arm down here, and it can allow you to lift a force with a big lever arm here. And one of the reasons that you have to build these muscles up to be really big, to be a weight lifter, is because of the fact that you have this short, tiny little lever arm. I love to paint. I paint rooms in my house all over the place because it's kind of fun. Um, and you apply a little force, long lever arm. And what do you get out when you're trying to pry that lid up? You get a big force, short lever arm. Same thing holds with scissors. So there's lots and lots of examples in your life. Now, wheels and axles are nothing but round levers. They are levers that have an axle instead of a pivot. So it works like this. If you can picture this as a steering wheel or a doorknob, something like this, you can exert a small force over a relatively large lever arm. And if this is your pivot, what you get out is a big force times a very, very small lever arm. I suppose I should make that F a little bigger because that's a big force. Um, that's how a doorknob works. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where the knob, actually like the knob came off of something and you're in there with that tiny little shaft and you're trying to turn it with your fingers. That's really, really difficult. A lever like this, this kind of a doorknob is actually easier to open because of the fact that here is a longer lever arm than just the radius here. So this you need to apply smaller force. This one, you have to apply a larger force because the radius is smaller. 
I really love cars. And one of the things that's interesting is you look at a modern fancy car with automatic transmission. Um, the steering wheel can be quite small. And it's quite small because you don't have to torque this around. Little bit of force. There's your lever arm and you can move the move the steering wheel. Back before we had automatic transmissions and you really had to torque a car around, the bigger the steering wheel, the bigger the diameter, it made it easier because you have a steering wheel with a huge lever arm and it made it just easier to steer. Lots of wheels and axles in your life. Everything from a simple rolling pin of course, wheels, uh, gears, if you use a screwdriver to actually screw in a, a little nut, um, you don't screw in nuts, do you? You screw in screws, um, or a pencil sharpener, they're just all over the place. Okay, that's going to end part one of Simple Machines. We'll come back next time with the rest of them.